Hi everybody, I'm Megan, and welcome back to another chapter of There I Read It, where I am currently going over all of the Harry Potter books, but only chapter by chapter, and it's the first time I've ever read them, so I don't know what's coming around each corner. Well, actually, I mean, kind of I do, because I've seen the movies before, but that was when they released, and not really ever since, so it is largely a new experience, yes, yes. And today, we have gotten to chapter 19 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and this chapter is called the Hungarian Horntail. So to go ahead and jump into my notes, and you may hear my dog crunching her kibble behind me because she's chosen this exact moment to decide it's meal time. Anyways, for the last two weeks, Harry has felt very upset at school because nobody believes him that he didn't put his name into the Goblet of Fire. So the only thing that is sustaining Harry and helping him get through this very trying time is that he's gonna see Sirius soon. And Harry and Hermione have this kind of plot going on on how they're going to keep the common room empty so that nobody comes in and sees Sirius while they're talking. And it doesn't take long before the Rita Skeeter article comes out and it's really less about what's going on in the tournament and more about the life and times of Harry Potter. Man, it feels weird to say Harry Potter right now because I just got done directing the play Puffs where we were legally and expressly forbidden from using Harry and Potter in the same sentence together. But gosh, it was a fun show. Back to the book though. In the Skeeter article, it's also very noticeable that the champions from other nations have their names misspelled. And Cedric Diggory is not named himself at all, which if you think about it, I mean, the only logical reason to exclude Cedric is to make Harry look more innocent, I guess. Because if Hogwarts doesn't have any other named champion, then Harry really didn't do as much wrong. You know, it makes Harry seem like a much better person that just sort of cheated to enter and he was the best out of everybody that tried to enter, more so than he created a fake school to be the only person chosen from that school and then, you know, sort of knocked the actual Hogwarts representative out of the limelight. Even though behind the scenes, that's kind of what happened, or at least what everybody thinks happened. And the article even goes on to interview Colin Creevy, who, I, I mean, I really like this kid. I do. And I think he's getting a bad rap. He is enthusiastic and kind of sweet and a little bit, you know, of a fanboy. But I don't think he's got any ill will about him. I think he could actually be a very useful, good friend if Harry would give him a chance. And I know he's a year younger than Harry, but so what? I mean, come on, be in the real world. Is everybody that you know as an adult the exact same age as you? Get over yourself. But Colin Creevy actually told Rita Skeeter that Harry and Hermione were a couple in love. Skeeter even talks about how beautiful Hermione is and that gets Hermione pulled into the whole thing and harassed at school too. And Hermione is just like, ignore them Harry. Which Harry is almost envious that he doesn't have as much ability to do that as Hermione does. But if you really step back and think about it, it, why would that be? Like, what is the difference between them? It, it's either that Hermione is so used to being harassed at school and regarded as ugly that being called, you know, ugly and snickered at now doesn't phase her, or it's because Hermione has a much better shield to deflect that kind of behavior because her parents are good to her. So if you have a decent home life and you feel secure there and you feel loved there and well regarded there, then, you know, what these jerks do at school doesn't matter as much. But if you don't have that sort of safety and security in your personal life, then yeah, the extended people in your tribal setting of a school system are going to cut you twice as deep. So I can kind of see the psychology there for how Hermione doesn't let it get to her, but Harry does. Then Harry has to serve out his detention that Snape gave him, and it was two hours of pickling rat brains. Um, I assume that that has some purpose, but... Ugh. And Harry ends up making a statement that he refuses to make up with Ron unless Ron apologizes and sort of admits that he's jealous and he's wrong. And I don't know why Harry is digging in his heels 
feels and acting this way. Like, like I can sort of see Ron's perspective of like, oh, Harry gets everything. He takes everything and I am nothing. So I finally had enough of that. Like, I can understand that from Ron's side. But Harry's side, it's like, hey, I have really nothing and no one. And here is my one goodest, bestest friend in the world. But he's not worth the effort to make things right with or have a good conversation with. Because I feel like if Harry actually sat down and said, Ron, seriously, I want to tell you what this situation is that's going on. I didn't put my name in the goblet, blah, blah, blah. I feel like they could clear this up relatively easily. But Harry's just back in this attitude that I noticed in him even in the first book where he's kind of like, I'm too good for everyone and everything. And maybe that's part of a trauma response, like an avoidant attachment style. But it, it just, for the sake of this book, unless there's some plot point as to why this is important later that Ron and Harry don't talk, it really does not make sense to me that they can't make up. But without Ron, Harry ends up glued to Hermione a lot more. And Hermione's always in the library, so that's where Harry's going a lot now too. And Victor Crumb is also in the library a lot, and there's no mention as to why. But wherever Victor goes, his fangirl club follows. So it's kind of annoying. Then it's mentioned that the third years and up can go to Hogsmeade this weekend, I think it was. And Harry's like, fine, I'll go, but I'm gonna wear my invisibility cloak and I'm not gonna interact with anybody. I'm just gonna mumble to you, Hermione. And Hermione's like, oh my gosh. Like this girl, this poor child is a saint in this book so far, putting up with this kind of crap from a mediocre white man. I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. Harry Potter is not that special. He is mediocre at best, but he wants to act like the king of the freaking universe and that everybody needs to bow down to him, his whims and his attitude. And it's just so exhausting. But Harry and Hermione end up going into the three broomsticks and Harry is still under that stupid cloak and the kids notice Hagrid and Professor Moody talking and Moody keeps drinking from a hip flask like he he has this idea in his head that he can so easily be poisoned that he will not take a drink that he doesn't prepare himself. And I guess Moody also has a similar hang up with food, which how do you live? Why are you even in this restaurant taking up space? It's a small business, man. Order some cheese sticks. Oh, and it was actually really interesting that Moody starts looking around with his googly eye and he's able to see through Harry's invisibility cloak. So he comes over to sort of, you know, drop information to that effect. And Hagrid even leans in and asks Harry to show up at his cabin at midnight in the cloak. So Harry ends up back in Gryffindor Tower and the Creevy brothers have got the Harry Stinks buttons and they're trying to enchant them to change them to be like, support Harry. But they're failing at it miserably and making it say, you know, like Harry really stinks or super stinks, something to that effect. And I'm just sitting here thinking, okay, the Creevy boys are from the real world and this is the 90s. So kids, how about a Sharpie? I mean, granted, it won't look the best, and granted, the badges do change what they say, but all in all, at the end of the day, if you're making the problem worse, sweetheart, just use a Sharpie. <laughs> just, you know, make it say whatever you want. It's not a hard fix. You guys are normal muggles. Deal with it in a muggle way. But Harry ends up going down to Hagrid's hut. He's in the cloak so nobody can see him. And Hagrid's like, okay, is that you? All right, come on, follow me. And Hagrid goes and collects Madame Maxine. And they go for this stroll in the woods. And they come across all these dragons. There are four dragons. And Charlie Weasley is among the people trying to keep them contained. So they have the Hungarian Horntail, a common Welsh Green, a Swedish Short Snout, and a Chinese Fireball Dragon. And by the illustrations in the book, they just look insane. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please come over to youtube.com slash the family and check out these pictures for yourself because I think they are really the best I can show, I know, without getting makeup all over my book. I'm not showing you the greatest, but look up the illustrated edition art because there are some really interesting dragon iconography in here. 
Yep, that's the best you're getting. Sorry. To do better would require more time, energy, and money than this series is currently pulling in. So if you want better uh, imagery <laughs> in these vlogs, watch, share, subscribe, comment, etc. And all of these dragons are from different regions, so it's kind of strange to me. Like, if these are for the Triwizard Tournament, wouldn't you want the dragons to all be the exact same type? I, I don't know. It seems like some of these will surely be much easier to defeat than others. But the one thing that they all have in common is that they are all nesting mothers, which I believe means they have fertilized eggs. And Harry's kind of looking at his watch going, man, it's close to 1 a.m. I got to get back to Gryffindor Tower in the common room to meet Sirius. So he takes off without letting Hagrid know. And Harry ends up bumping into Karkaroff outside. And so that means with Karkaroff snooping around that all of the different schools now have someone within them that can alert their champion of what the first task is going to be. But Harry makes it back to the common room. The area is emptied out out and Sirius's head appears in the fireplace. And Sirius explains to Harry that an auror was needed at Hogwarts and Sirius believes that Karkaroff is the one who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire and Karkaroff was actually in Azkaban for a while because he was a Death Eater and Moody was the one who put him there. But Karkaroff ended up getting released because sort of similar to the communist days in America, he went and named names to the ministry and got other people arrested as Death Eaters. So Sirius is actually under the belief that the break-in Moody had at his house right before school started was real, that something was actually going on, and that they were probably trying to get to him to stop Moody from going to Hogwarts to keep Harry safe. And Sirius Black is even going, yeah, Bertha Jenkins vanished in Albania, and she was kind of dumb, and she was kind of super talky, so considering that that's where they think Voldemort last was, that's not a good combination of things to happen. And Harry mentions the dragons that he saw and Sirius is like, oh yeah, there's a really easy way to get by dragons. Um, let me tell you about that. But then Harry hears somebody coming towards the common room. So he has to shoo Sirius away before he gets the information. And it turns out it was Ron that had come looking for Harry to see what he was doing, why he wasn't in bed this late at night. So see, Ron is also in this position where he wants to make up with Harry, but he just won't do it. But instead of seeing that and being like, oh, my friend cares about me. I want to make up with him. Harry's like, oh, stupid Ron. And he's angry because he had to shoo Sirius off so quickly. And, you know, he he's taking that and projecting that anger onto Ron and taking it out on him. And it, it's not right. And it's not fair. And I really can't stand Harry. And that's sort of my last note for this chapter. We're 19 chapters in at this point. Hopefully the tournament is going to start real soon. Oh my goodness. This is such a bear of a book. But it, it is interesting, I will say, for as much as I do not care for Harry and his attitude and his personality in general in any of the three and a third, three and a half books that I've read so far, it does seem like Harry has got a lot more depth and you can kind of reverse engineer an understanding for why he's acting certain ways. And I don't feel like we got that in the previous books. So I will say I like that. Um, it does help me to understand and empathize with Harry more to get more text and background on his thought processes. But overall, he is still not winning me over. <sighs> and I doubt he's going to this far into the series. But that is neither here nor there. We are still going through this book and we will see you next week in chapter 20. Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and any other thing that you would like to do to help promote this video. It really helps. And like I said, this is more of a passion project than a money earning project for me. So if you could uh, please help get the word out that this exists, I always appreciate that. And we will see you next time, family members. Bye. Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page, and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's 
really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members. Bye.